Hi, thank you for joining us today. My name is Shanley Carlton. I'm on the customer success and professional services team at SagaWorks, and we have Matt Grossman, our customer success manager. We're going to talk to you today about the value of adding a 3D immersive experience to your website. Matt, can you give us a little background on why you're an expert on this subject? Thanks, Shanley. As you mentioned, I'm manager of customer success at SagaWorks, and I'm uh, concerned with all things user experience here. And I'm also adjunct professor of information design and architecture in the information design and strategy graduate program at Northwestern University. Matt, I thought we could go through the history of of web design and, and yeah, like literally the internet and then land on SaganWorks. Sure, yeah. The, uh, the evolution of the web has always been a question of uh, constraints. You know, it's, it's always information uh, pushing against the constraints of technology and, and bandwidth. Uh, and it's built within the page model, which is, you know, information laid out in two dimensions, the, the X and the Y plane, uh, the, the vertical and the horizontal. And we scroll uh, from top to bottom uh, on a web page, the way we would scan uh, and left to right, you know, the way we would scan a page in a book. And this is very familiar to us, but from an informational perspective, it's very limiting. So if you look at, uh, you know, from, from the dawn of the web until now, all of the uh, innovations and all of, all of the evolutions have, have pushed us a step toward the next dimension. And that, that would be the Z plane or, or depth, uh, the third dimension. Can you um, see my screen, Mark? Yeah, yeah, and, and here we, you know, we begin with just text on a page. Uh, and of course, the, the great uh, innovation with the web is the hyperlink there, allowing you to jump from place to place. And this is a, a good place to mention that, that nearly all of the language that we, uh, that we use to describe what we do on the web in the, the two-dimensional format is some sort of analogy to three-dimensional space. And the reason for that is that we we live in three-dimensional space. It's it's all we know. It's how our brains are wired. It's what we understand. We've never actually been in a two-dimensional space. So Matt actually shared this link with me. I think it was a, an art project, Matt, that someone did to kind of showcase like how the internet's changed over time. Sure. Okay. Yeah. It's a it's a fun art project that takes one web page and with a slider at the bottom allows you to explore how that same page looks uh, beginning in 1991 and then uh, all the way through today, um, showing the, the evolution of technology on the web, um, how we went from text to uh, images and text and then uh, eventually uh, audio uh, moving images. Okay. Uh, in the form of GIFs. Now, of course, bandwidth still isn't allowing for, for video to just be deployed on a web page yet. Um, and, you know, as I mentioned, the, the technology just keeps evolving and we're moving, we're moving toward uh, rich multimedia and eventually we're pushing toward that, that third dimension, you know, the, the Z plane, you know, we wanna, we wanna see things in 3D. Um, so you can see a 3D object here on the website. Um, and this is where we're headed. You know, we've, we've always been pushing against these, uh, these limitations. You know, it's, it's always been the technology and the, the data transfer rates that have held us back from, from exploring in three dimensions on the web. The two-dimensional web landscape is filled with terminology that actually references the 3D world. And the reason for this is that we can't even operate in the two-dimensional world without using analogies to the three-dimensional world because we live in the three-dimensional world. Our brains are wired for it. It's all we understand. So we talk about, uh, we talk about navigation. One of the, one of the fun uh, examples is uh, a breadcrumb trail, which is a reference to the, uh, the children's story, Hansel and Gretel, you know, leaving the, the trail of breadcrumbs through the woods and then following it back. You know, we talk about going to these places uh, on the web uh, for instance, this this uh, clog page, and if you look up in the upper left corner there, you have what's called a breadcrumb trail, and it shows you the pages that you visited along the way. And this is a this is a reference to a very three dimensional thing: getting lost in the woods and leaving a trail so you can find your way out. You know, we're constantly doing this um, in in the web. We're constantly using terminology that references three dimensional space. These shoes are cute, but I wouldn't pay 130 bucks <laughs> for them. 
I need to get out of here. I need to go back <laughs> to clogs. <laughs> Um, another thing I had pulled up to, I'm a big fan of the Corvette and I was looking at their website and they have one of these like endless scroll web designs. Sure. Um, and I thought we could talk maybe like about the, the phrasing of scroll and how that doesn't even exist in, in three 3d world. Yeah. So, and in, in this page also, it looks like they have a bit of uh, 3d content content on there as well. But um, yeah, there's all these there's all these different um, iterations on the web of how to make a, a two dimensional page into a place uh, that's filled with a lot of a lot of stuff. And it can be, you know, as we saw with the breadcrumb trail, it can be kind of confusing when you're going from uh, page to page to page uh, to, to maintain a sense of place and really understand where you are in the context of the the environment, you know, and, and this is why when, when websites are created, they're actually created with, with what's called a site map, you know, so you're actually mapping the places in this uh, environment, you're creating a topology. So the, uh, the page model, um, one of the iterations of this is the endless scrolling page. And this is really just an effort to uh, prevent people from getting lost in a uh, jumping from page to page in an environment that they don't really have a map of or an understanding of. So it puts everything all on, on one page, um, much like you'd put everything in one room to simplify things. Matt, you've mentioned that we've consistently been moving towards the third, the third dimension, but what does the third dimension actually offer when it comes to information? That's a great question. Um, so, it offers spatial context, which is something that we are completely familiar with in our daily lives. You know, we we know where the uh, a certain spice is in our kitchen. Um, we know where our keys are um, in our in our home. You know, we we arrange things in space and we understand things in space and we recall things in space uh, more naturally. And so, there's a huge opportunity uh, now that now that technology and uh, data transfer rates bandwidth allow us to deliver virtual 3D spaces via the web. There's a huge opportunity for everyone from individuals to business to begin arraying all of their content in three, three dimensions. Maybe you could tell us some examples of how SaganWorks has actually ha helped a business do that very thing. Sure, uh, a great example is the, the Henry Ford Museum uh, we worked with them uh, on a, a digital collection. The, uh, the museum has, has an, an amazing floor space with uh, you know, all sorts of uh, exhibits that, that are uh, you know, incredible historical artifacts layered with uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, information you know, for, for people to learn about them. And in the three-dimensional virtual space, we're able to reestablish a, a context, a, a spatial context for all of those objects and all of that information that is absent on the web. Uh, in the, the two-dimensional page model on their website, you know, you have, you have images, you have some information next to it, but you're, you're missing the spatial context that people find in the museum. The ability to walk around uh, objects and uh, dig a little deeper and, and feel what it's like to be near things. So this is an example of the Henry Ford uh, using SaganWorks to showcase some of their digital collections that they haven't been able to actually put on their physical showroom floor. Um, basically, there's a ton of content in here. Uh, you, we have web links uh, that link out to more detailed information, videos, images. They, they have a ton of online content and they've only been able to display it in a two-dimensional way like we were showing before where it's an image with some text um, but now they're actually able to curate and build exhibits um, using those those collections that they they had in the, in 2D, and they had one of their curators actually build the space. And they have some of their collections are are massive. So these these crate labels that they have here, and we actually put them on on crates and created art for them. It's just wonderful that that uh, you know for all the people that um, for for one reason or another can't make it to the museum, uh, the museum can create uh, endless 
virtual exhibits and people anywhere in the world uh, sitting in their living room can, can step into this space, walk around and learn about the, the museum's uh, artifacts and archives. I wonder if Melvin knows that he's on a wall of a 3D room on the internet. We should tell him. We should tell him. <laughs> So here you have the blog that's discussing the entire, uh, the series of collections. And then this is the Sagan embedded as its own media type, kind of like a YouTube video would be embedded. In and this, blog. yeah, this, this uh, right here is something really special. The ability to be in the two-dimensional page model and simply step through the page into a three-dimensional environment is really powerful. And all of a sudden there's, uh, a spatial context to all of this information. It's just amazing that that this room can be uh, embedded straight into a web page or or shared uh, via URL. Uh, makes it uh, incredibly powerful. Like these are images that I didn't even know the Henry Ford had. I love the Henry Ford, and I go to the Hen I. Used to be a season ticket holder pre-COVID, um, and I go to the Henry Ford a lot. They have like the oldest steam engine that it still exists. And Sega Works isn't just for museums; it's useful for all different types of businesses. One example is a is a jazz club located in Ann Arbor called the Blue Llama. This is a custom Sagan that we built them that they embedded onto their page. And again, you can just step straight through the two-dimensional web page and into the, the three-dimensional environment. Uh, and it's it's filled with uh, all different media types, videos of performances, uh, the the menu, even the even the uh, takeout page to order. <laughs> That's fantastic. And this is an example of, uh, you know, a perfect reproduction of, a, of an environment, which uh, our, our 3D art team can do. Uh, and this is uh, really detailed work and it looks beautiful. Um, and then we also make it easy for people to just create uh, from a library of pre-made 3D spaces that we provide for all of our users for free. So here I'm in the SaganWorks app. I'll just show what Matt was saying about adding a Sagan to your account. Yeah, so this is the equivalent of a blank uh, page on the web, but of course it's it's in 3D. And you know we've talked about how how web design itself has been moving uh, toward 3D for a long time. Uh, it used to be very expensive and very difficult to build a web page, and eventually software came along that sort of democratized, uh, you know, website building and made it really easy to do it, put it in the, the hands of, of consumers. And now uh, you see people from all walks of life building websites every day. That's what SaganWorks intends to do for 3D. Uh, it's as easy as dragging, uh, you know, an empty space out onto the map, as, as you just demonstrated, and then uh, jumping inside and adding your stuff. Uh, and from there, publishing it to the web via uh, a URL, embedding it into a web page. Uh, we're making this easy for everyone to do in, in minutes. So the reason I have all of our team's photos on my computer is because I was doing a special project. And I'm gonna basically create a Team SagaWorks room using these images. And like Matt was saying, you can just drag them in there we are. This isn't all of our team, but some of our team. Um, so now we've created the Sagan in just like literally 60 seconds, uh, showcasing some of the Sagan work. So here's the same room, um, but embedded on one of our sites. And you can embed it anywhere uh, on your website, on your business's website. And anything I do inside of Sagan works, like in the web editor will be reflected um, on that page. So say I want to bring Matt up here and me, the two of us. Um, 
So we can update the room. And if I refresh the page, see, we've already updated it. Um, and I can explore the room. And anyone who sees this, they, they can't edit my Sagan, but they can explore it, which would be the use case of you know, the, the people who visit your site. Um, but because I own the Sagan, I can change things. I mean, this could be the embedded room could be my whole website, you know, instead of creating a website with a lot of different pages, I could just use one room, um, multiple rooms, different sections of rooms to organize everything I would normally organize on a, on a traditional web page. And the potential for what you put in uh, the Sagan is endless. You know, you can you can promote uh, your business, you can collect your personal information, your photos, your videos. Um, you can reproduce an environment that's meaningful to you. You can create context, uh, whether it's your home uh, or an environment for you know a hobby of yours, and, and collecting everything related to that. Um, right up to building full museum exhibits, uh, galleries showcasing art, you know, the, the potential is, is endless. Uh, there's, there's almost nothing you, you can't use SaganWorks for. And with SaganWorks, there's no need to, to budget for expensive equipment. And we're not just giving you 3D objects to slap into your website as a novelty. We're giving you walkable spaces that are easy to reconfigure any way you want and able to be sent anywhere via a URL, by embedding in a website, same way you would a YouTube video. Think of us as your dream gallery in the city without the expensive rent, the limited local audience, or the months it takes to design. You can easily and quickly create 3D spaces and share them out to whoever you want. Thanks, Matt. I think that's all the time we have for today. So I'd just like to thank everyone for joining us. Um, you can reach out to me or Matt at any, any time at Shanley.